Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Edna Zhe. And I'm Raymond Yang. Here is a look at tonight's top stories. Hundreds mark one year anniversary of the Occupy protests. Taiwan braces for a super typhoon, disrupting transportation and businesses. Pro-independence groups in Catalonia win majority of seats in parliamentary elections. Hundreds of pro-democracy supporters marked the one-year anniversary of the Occupy movement today in Admiralty. While there were talks about a reoccupation, it didn't materialize and the event remained peaceful. In a stark contrast of previous events, hundreds of pro-democracy demonstrators holding up the trademark yellow umbrellas stood in silence outside government headquarters at 5.58 p.m., the moment when the first tear gas canister was fired into the crowd exactly one year ago. Many had feared another occupation of roads on the first anniversary of the pro-democracy Occupy movement, but the gathering went without chaos. But tensions remained high among the crowd, where police repeatedly warned protesters not to carry out illegal acts. Radical pan-democrat party People Power had earlier called for demonstrators to charge through police cordon and occupy two lanes of Gloucester Road for 87 minutes, representing the number of tear gas canisters that were fired last year. Over a dozen pro-democracy groups, including the Civil Human Rights Front and the Federation of Students, teamed up to organize the anti-political persecution campaign today. Taking their turns, familiar faces such as the three Occupy co-founders of Benny Tai, Chan Kin Man and Chu Yu Ming, as well as former student leaders Lester Shum and Alex Chow, went on stage to give speeches. Pan-Democrat lawmakers Emily Lau Alan Le and Li Chagian also turned up to support the cause. Organizer spokeswoman Dorothy Wong insisted the gathering was to let people reflect on the democracy movement over the past year, and they had no say in how participants wished to behave. Police presence was already heavy around the government and legislative complex early this afternoon, as they kept an eagle eye on the pro-democracy marches. At the same time, a group of anti-Occupy protesters held a counter-protest at Chater Garden, where they popped black balloons printed with the faces of pro-democracy figures. Spokesman Tang Ta Singh said today marks a sad day for Hong Kong, as the Occupy movement not only polarized the city, but also dealt a huge blow to the economy. Under police escort, the group then slowly marched towards government headquarters. But they never directly encountered rival groups, with the bridge above Citic Tower in Admiralty, the closest they would get to the main protest area today. A girl suffering from a lung disease may have just one more day to live if she doesn't receive a double lung transplant. But first, DAB legislator Tam Yu Chong says the pro-establishment camp has no intention of taking up all the top posts of LegCo's committees. Vicky Wen reports. The Legislative Council will elect chairpersons of its 16 committees where members return next month. Speaking after a radio program this morning, the AB legislator Tam Hyu Chung said the pro establishment camp has no intention of monopolizing the top post of the committees. He said they are liaising with other pan democratic legislators on the issue. Tam added that they hope to have a pan-democrat as the deputy chairman of the House Committee, a post which will be left vacant after former Civic Party lawmaker Ronnie Tong leaves LegCo next month. 16-year-old Jamila Low is currently in critical condition at Green Mary Hospital, awaiting a double lung transplant from a suitable donor. Her doctor said Low may not survive tomorrow if she does not receive the transplant. Family members and friends of Lo are pleading for a donor family to come forward. I hope there will be a miracle, Lo's father said. The teenager's lungs failed suddenly earlier this month during a school trip to the mainland and was diagnosed with primary pulmonary hypertension, a condition that has no specific cause. The MTL Corporation has been blasted for not allowing students with large musical instruments to board trains but turn a blind eye to parallel traders with oversized baggage and items. 
More than 3,000 people have signed up online, calling on people to protest with their own musical instruments this Saturday at Taiwan Station. Speaking on the radio program this morning, Mavis Long, the organizer of the campaign, said she will not cancel the event unless the railway company promises to give leeway to musicians. But the MTL's head of operating, Francis Lee, said while the company is reviewing its regulations, which will take a month to complete, it will not provide any exceptions from the current rules. A member of LegCo's transport panel, Wu Jiwai, suggested the company make room for people who carry oversized baggage, such as musical instruments and bicycles, during non-peak hours. Vicky Wen, ATV News. Taiwan is bracing for Typhoon Du Chuan as the storm sweeps across the island and is expected to make landfall later this evening. The typhoon has disrupted several flights to and from the island and Fuzhou. Torrential rains and high winds lashed Taiwan as Super Typhoon Du Juan pounds the island. Many tourists have been evacuated from Taiwan's popular sites, Green Island and Orchid Island. While some visitors gathered along the coast to get a glimpse of the waves, others opted to leave the area and train stations were packed with travelers. Local media reported that schools, businesses and all high-speed trains were shut in the afternoon. The typhoon made its presence felt as it drummed up waves along the coast of East China. Du Juan is expected to lead to storm tides in East China's Fujian and Zhejiang provinces, with the highest waves reaching 6 meters. Authorities have implemented typhoon prevention plans in Changla City in Fujian province. Soldiers have been patrolling the beach to prevent visitors from getting too close to the water. Fishing boats have also been called to return to port and fishermen were urged to leave their boats and find safe shelter on land. Authorities have also advised residents to take precautions against the typhoon and prepare for possible floods as gales and rainstorms are expected to lash the provinces. Under the influence of Typhoon Du Juan, several flights to and from Taipei and Fuzhou have been cancelled or delayed. Passengers are advised to check the latest flight status with relevant airlines before heading to the airport. Overseas, Pope Francis has ended his U.S. visit with a mass attended by hundreds of thousands of people and addressing sex abuse scandals in the church. And separatist groups in Catalonia have won general elections, which was seen as a de facto referendum on independence from Spain. Arthur Urquilla reports. There were celebrations in Barcelona, Spain, as pro-independence groups won the majority of seats in Catalonia's legislature. This sets the region on course for a unilateral decision for independence from the country. The celebrations kicked off as secessionists were set to take 72 out of 135 seats in the regional assembly. The main separatist group, Junts Pel C, secured 62 seats, while far-left group CUP won 10 seats. Three months before the national election, the strong show of support for the independence campaign has dealt a blow to Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy's government, which has opposed attempts for a referendum. Spain's constitution does not allow any region to break away. Therefore, the prospect of independence for Catalonia is still hypothetical. But regional government head Artur Mas said the win was against the odds and gave the cause strength and legitimacy. The 48% of the vote obtained out of a record 78% turnout gives a big boost to the independence campaign, which has lost support in recent years. But the ruling Spanish People's Party says without the majority vote, the secessionists had failed in their campaign to break up the country. The party's vice president of communications, Pablo Casado, said the secessionists had divided Catalan society and work had to be carried out to heal the wounds. Pope Francis wrapped up his six-day visit to the U.S. with a mass outside the Philadelphia Museum of Art to more than one million people. During the service, he addressed the sexual abuse of children by clergy, calling actions which cause people to lose faith in the church a violation. The truly intolerable scandal consists in everything that breaks down and destroys trust and the working of the spirit, the pontiff said.
los crímenes y pecados de los abusos. Earlier, he told bishops at St. Charles Borromeo Chapel that the crimes of sexual abuse cannot be maintained any longer. He also met with five victims of sexual abuse, among them those abused by members of the church. What is important to note is that this time the, the survivors that the Pope met are not only survivors from uh, abuse from uh, clergy, or, but uh, also uh, abuses in the family or abuses by educators. This is a larger perspective of the responsibility of the church toward the, the, the young people. He can make changes. He is totally in charge. And what we've seen is he's been in office almost two and a half years now. And we've heard him speak a number of times with you know, great sympathy towards victims, but we haven't seen him do a single thing to protect the children. And for victims, that's extremely important that it doesn't keep happening. And that's what we feel he's lacking. Earlier comments by Francis on the pain the scandal had caused the church angered victims who felt they were being sidelined amid celebrations of the pontiff's visit. Yeah. Thai police say they believe last month's bombing at the Erewhon Shrine in Bangkok, which killed 20 people, including two Hong Kong residents, was retaliation for the suppression of human trafficking gangs. They have arrested two of the 17 facing arrest warrants. The pair are members of a smuggling network and admitted they were responsible for planting two explosives last month, one by the shrine and another that caused no casualties. Police said raids on two apartments in the Minbori district and covered detonators and ball bearings which match ones found at the scene. Among other charges, the two suspects have been charged with participating and attempting premeditated murder and unauthorized possession of explosives and offensive weapons. Authorities stressed they were expediting efforts to bring others to justice. Arthur Rakula, ATV News.